Howdy folks, you're listening to Smarticus Tells History, the podcast where we discuss some of the wacky and crazy stories your friends may have told you. So sit down, have a beer or two, and let's learn a thing or two. Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. I am your host, Smarticus. We use molasses in a lot of our everyday lives. We put it in our food, we make candy out of it, rum, baked goods, animal feed, vinegar, citric acid, all kinds of things. It's made from refined sugar cane and sugar beets. Well, just over 100 years ago, the town of Boston got a lot more than they asked for. So much of it, in fact, that it actually killed some of the people, severely injured others, and did long-lasting damage. The events that happened on January 15, 1919, is most likely one of the strangest man-made disasters that we have ever seen. The molasses back in 1919 was being produced for making artillery and other munitions for the First World War. Now, if you've never used or seen molasses before, it's a very dark, thick, and sticky syrup-like liquid. It was being contained in a 90-foot wide tank that held 2.5 million gallons of the stuff. The company that it belonged to was the United States Industrial Alcohol Co., a refining company for making, well, alcohol. Two days before the incident, the tank had been filled to the brim. It was purchased since the war had just ended two months previous in November of 1918. The company knew that the Prohibition Act was going to be passed in a few months, so they wanted to try and produce it quickly and sell it all before that happened. So, what actually happened? Well, the tank that was holding the molasses had ruptured after being filled to the brim just two days prior. It was suspended approximately 50 feet in the air. And when it ruptured, molasses came crashing down without any warning. As it filled the streets, it reached speeds up to 35 miles an hour. The molasses laid waste to the immediate area. People were swept up in the wave that it made. The thick, sticky nature of the substance made it difficult for people to swim through it to safety. It also made it difficult for the rescuers to make it to the victims before it was too late. It didn't just take the lives of people, however. There were also several animals that were found, including horses and a few dogs. It made a wave of up to 15 feet high, according to a few of the reports of those that saw it traveling down the roads. The main cause of the rupture was a combination of bad decisions and Mother Nature. The container itself apparently had a lot of leaks. As a matter of fact, it had enough leaks that the locals would come by with little jars and cups and skim off what they could for their own personal use. The molasses was heated inside the container to make it easier for refinement. However, there was an extreme temperature change that caused the molasses to expand. This, in turn, caused the pressure of the molasses and the carbon dioxide that was released during the fermenting process to build up, thus causing a rupture. After the incident, it was discovered that the local people had been complaining about the leaks. So, instead of fixing the leaks, the United States Industrial Alcohol Company, well, they simply painted the container the color of molasses to disguise the leaks instead of fixing them. Another investigation, one that was actually done more recently in 2014, had also found that the tank had other design flaws. It had been designed with steel walls that were not up to the standards that they should have been, and in fact, they were about half as thick as they should have been, and severely lacked in manganese. This made the walls way too thin, and was found to be the main cause of the rupture. If painting the container wasn't bad enough, the company attempted to cover up the story and say that it was a terrorist attack by anarchists. Of course, there is no evidence of explosives or evidence of any kind, really, that would support this claim. They were, of course, discovered and forced to pay over $600,000 in multiple settlements. By the time the cleanup was completed, several weeks later, there was a total of 21 people killed and 150 injured. Those that were injured looked like toffee apples coming into the hospital, and according to a few of the reports, those that were dead aged from 10 to 78. The majority of those deaths, however, were the workers that were directly near the tank when it had ruptured. The streets themselves, they smelled of molasses on days that were hotter than others for a very long time afterwards. The company's shortcomings and sheer negligence led to many of the laws that you find today when it comes to construction. Architects and engineering plans now have to be properly inspected and approved, sometimes multiple times, and after each revision, for almost any kind of construction project. Construction licenses and permits all began in Boston and Massachusetts, and they eventually spread throughout the country. 
I hope you guys enjoyed the show. And if you have heard any wacky and crazy stories that you want told here, you can go to our Facebook page at Smarticus Tales History and leave a comment. Now, with that being said, I'll see you next time, and you guys have a wonderful, fantastic, and awesome day. Bye now.